It's a horror director's job to make their film not just entertaining and frightening, but memorable. By utilizing mind-blowing twists, creative kills, well-timed jump scares, petrifying monsters, and engaging openings, there are plenty of reasons why scary movies stick with us. However, sometimes you can't remember anything about a movie save for the one scene that you're just unable to get out of your head, for better or worse. So with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 horror movies remembered for one amazing scene. Number 10, The Sleeping Bag Kill, Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood. To the surprise of absolutely no one, Friday the 13th Part 7 has Jason Voorhees roaming Crystal Lake once again and slaying horny teenagers. It's certainly not an inventive premise, but the sequel probably has the best death scene in the entire series. After Jason stumbles upon Judy resting in her sleeping bag, he lunges for her. Instead of trying to escape or doing anything pragmatic, Judy tucks herself in the bag as if it will somehow protect her against a reanimated killing machine. After dragging the sleeping bag across the woods with Judy still inside, Jason then hurls it against a tree trunk, killing her instantly. The scene is memorable because it's hilarious and terrifying. The scene stays with viewers since the visual of a masked zombie tossing a sleeping bag into a tree is in itself absolutely ridiculous, even by the goofy franchise's standards. Interestingly though, the original cut was meant to show Jason whacking Judy into the trunk six times, but by cutting the shot so Jason killed her with one swing, it makes the scene scarier because it demonstrates just how inhumanly strong Jason actually is. And funnily enough, this scene did become so iconic that it was reused for comedic effect in Jason X a few movies later, with a few more whacks for good measure. Number 9, The Hot Tub Valentine. Valentine centers around five women who are sorting out their love lives just before Valentine's Day. But after receiving disgusting love letters, the girls learn they're being stalked by a serial killer wearing a Cupid mask. Of course, Valentine is, like most slashes, predictable, formulaic, badly acted, and ultimately kind of forgettable. I mean, even if you've seen it, you may have forgotten the killer's identity because the big reveal left zero impression. But there is one kill that's definitely worth looking at. While Paige relaxes in a hot tub, Cupid seals her inside with the covering sheet. Although Cupid could have just left her to drown, he instead toys with Paige by drilling through the covering, hoping to impale her. Although Paige tries to avoid being stabbed, she actually needs to use the drill holes to breathe. And because of this, her only means of survival is to get as dangerously close to the very weapon that Cupid is using against her. However, after Cupid just kind of gets bored, he opens up the covering and then tosses the drill in, electrocuting Paige to death. Because the rest of Valentine is a bit of a bummer, it feels like the creative team behind the movie put all their best ideas into this one scene. Number 8. It's a sequel, not a remake. Curse of Chucky. After the Child's Play movies grew increasingly stagnant, it felt like it was time to revitalize the franchise. So when the posters and teasers for Curse of Chucky showed off a redesigned version of the murderous doll, everyone assumed that it was some kind of reboot. But at the halfway point, the movie throws a massive curveball. After Barb notices that there have been suspicious killings in her house after her sister came into possession of Chucky, she decides to examine the doll. As she spots a piece of loose plastic on Chucky's face though, she begins to peel it off, exposing the scars that he sustained in the previous films. In this moment, the audience realizes that Curse of Chucky isn't a reboot, a reimagining, or a legacy sequel, but actually a direct continuation of the original series. The rest of the movie may not be that great, and the actual remake was even more disappointing, but you have to praise the writers for this cool gotcha moment. Despite the fact that the trailers and promotions never actually suggested that Curse of Chucky was a remake, the creative team did allow fans to draw this conclusion, making this reveal all the more satisfying. Number 7, The Razor Wire Slaughter, Ghost Ship. Ghost Ship is about, well, ghosts on a ship, I think? Whether you've seen the movie yesterday or at its premiere, you'll struggle to recall anything about this convoluted mess. And that's why it's so ironic that this forgettable horror flick has one of the most imaginatively creative openings in all of horror. In the beginning scene, we see dozens of passengers merrily dancing on an ocean liner, and because the credits and title are written in a cartoonishly pink font, you might swear that you're about to watch a light-hearted rom-com. However, while a little girl Kate dances with the captain, a razor-sharp wire suddenly unravels from its spool. With a little warning, the wire whips across the dance floor, slicing everyone in half. Because of Kate's short stature though, the wire flies straight over her head, making her the sole survivor. 
But as she looks around at the dismembered bodies and people trying to scoop their organs back into their body, it's self-evident that she will never forget this moment, just like the viewers. Number 6. The Half-Digested John Voight Anaconda Anaconda had a truly awesome cast. Because this monster thriller stars John Voight, Jennifer Lopez, Ice Cube, Eric Stoltz, Owen Wilson, and Danny Trejo, it felt like it had a lot of potential. Sadly, though, it was let down by a weak script, bland characters, and terrible CGI, even for the time. Of course, the one thing everyone remembers even more than the titular reptile is John Voight's performance as the snake hunter Paul Cerrone. Whether you think he's ridiculous or the best thing in the movie, his incomprehensible Comprehensible dialect and hammy mannerisms are entertaining as hell. Even though his mangled accent is a highlight, his most memorable moment ironically doesn't contain a word of dialogue. After the anaconda crushes Paul's bones with one tight squeeze, we see his jawbone dislodge from its socket and, as gross as that is, it gets much much worse. Although the snake swallows him whole, it suffers a bit of indigestion several minutes later, causing the 40-foot beast to barf Paul back up. As Jennifer Lopez's character looks at the half-digested man in horror, he then winks at her with his single eye before dropping to the ground dead. Now, Anaconda may be ludicrously campy, but it's moments like this that stick with you for good reason. Number 5. The Raven, Damien Omen 2 The Omen has some of the most iconic scenes in horror history. The woman hanging herself in the opening, the decapitation sequence, the priest being impaled, it's all good stuff. But some people forget that the sequels also have some memorable moments. Okay, maybe not the third one, but Damien Omen 2 definitely deserves more praise. Even though the elevator sequence is considered the most creative kill in the film, what happens to Joan Hart is much more disturbing and a little bit more memorable. See, after Joan learns that Damien is the Antichrist, she drives away in a panic after coming face to face with him. Using his devilish powers though, Damien curses her car to stall before sending his servant, the Raven, to peck her eyes out. Blinded by the bird's attack, Joan then stumbles under the road where she's killed by a semi-truck. Even though the scene itself is very simple, the actor's screaming is so convincing that it genuinely sounds like her eyeballs are being ripped from their sockets. Like Jamie Lee Curtis in Halloween or Janet Lee in Psycho, Shepard's screeching is so piercing that it's something you won't forget for a long, long time. Number 4, the basketball shot, Alien Resurrection. Alien Resurrection is so, so disappointing that the best scene in it has actually nothing to do with the aliens. After Ellen Ripley is brought back from the dead by cloning her DNA with a xenomorph, she develops heightened senses and reflexes. So when several mercenaries taunt her on the basketball court, she gives them a flavor of her abilities. And as she walks away from them, she effortlessly performs a behind-the-back half-court basketball shot. At the time of Alien Resurrection's release, this moment came across as incredibly corny. But when viewers learned the actress Sigourney Weaver actually formed this shot without any special effects, it instantly became the most talked about scene in an otherwise mediocre movie. Contrary to popular belief though, Weaver didn't actually nail this shot on the first take. After failing to sink the basket over and over, the director apparently said that he would just use CGI or a second ball if she didn't get the following shot. On the very next try though, the ball went in seamlessly and her co-stars were so dumbfounded by Weaver's skill that they immediately brought character which is why it cuts to the next shot immediately after in the film. Number 3, The Rat King, Sinister 2. Sinister 2 isn't an amazing film, but it didn't deserve to be the franchise killer that it was. The sequel overused villain Bagul, but it still had a few good ideas up its sleeve, especially when it came to the home movie snuff films that the demonic boogeyman manipulates children into making. These horror shots in their own right are always grisly, but the one that stands out from the second movie, and indeed the only scene that stands out from the second movie, involved a bunch of people, a couple of rats, and a couple of buckets. The sinister oi oi home movie cuts from a creepy looking communion in a church to the church being empty save for a group of people bound to the floor via nails smashed through their wrists. On each one's stomach is a metal bucket housing a rat inside. The kids then proceed to put hot coals on top of the buckets, which freaks out the rats and, to escape the heat, results in them burying into the bodies of the victims. It's gross, and let me tell you, not a way that I would like to go. Number 2, The Tanning Bed's Final Destination 3 in Final Destination 3, a group of people find themselves being hounded by the Grim Reaper after they cheat death. 
It doesn't matter what precautions the survivors take or where they are, death can come at them at any time. Even though the kills in Final Destination 3 aren't as memorable as the other installments though, there is one moment seared into viewers' memory banks forever. As Ashley and Ashlyn lay in their tanning beds, they are oblivious that they have literally entered their coffins. After the tanning beds malfunction, the heat cranks up until it's unbearable for the girls inside. And as they try to get out, a shelf comes loose and perfectly slots in between both beds, sealing them in. As the heat intensifies, the glass shatters and catches fire, cooking them both alive. Now, when you see over-the-top deaths like this, it's easy to say it's only a movie and that would never happen in real life. And while there have been cases where people's deaths have been linked to tanning beds, nobody has ever died in a manner depicted like in Final Destination 3. Nevertheless though, you'll still think twice the next time you take a trip to the tanning salon after watching this movie. Number 1. A Literal Bloodbath Hostel Part 2 Even though Hostel was criticised for its gratuitous violence, it made more than enough money to warrant a sequel. Despite the fact that Hostel Part 2 definitely feels like more of the same, there is one scene that's leagues ahead of everything else in the flick. After a college student called Lorna is abducted, she awakens to find herself naked, bound and upside down. To her horror, she sees a robed woman, Mrs. Bathory, undress and lay below Lorna while brandishing a scythe. Bathory then teases her victim by pressing her blade into every crevice of her body. Although she doesn't break the skin at first, it's still deeply chilling to hear the squeaking sound of the scythe passing across Lorna. She then starts hacking at Lorna's body though and bathing in her blood. When she has her fill, she slits Lorna's throat, basking in the blood gushing into her face. And even though this scene is horrifyingly gory, it's the performance that sells it. The way she screams like an animal and contorts her entire body in fear is guaranteed to haunt your dreams even more than just thinking about her grisly death without the sound on.